Today, I will be presenting on the Dominican Republic. Um, first, I'll start off with a brief overview of the market, and then we'd look specifically at the market for sources and condiments, and I'll close off talking a bit about some of the other opportunities within the market. In terms of location, the Dominican Republic is located within the Caribbean Sea. It represents two-thirds of the island of Hispaniola um, on the east of Haiti, just off the coast of Cuba. When we look at the economic overview, we see that the population is over uh, 9 million, which is like ni over nine times that of Trinidad and Tobago. And what I found was interesting is that for Santo Domingo alone, the population within Santo Domingo, it's over the, over the size of the population of Trinidad and Tobago as a whole. It's about 2 million. 69% of the population is located within the city area, and the GDP represents about $56.7 billion. In terms of import partners, the U.S. is the main supplier to the market, similar to Trinidad and Tobago. Key industries, tourism, ferronickel, sugar gold, silver, coffee, and a range of others, including some products which are produced within the free zone, such as pharmaceutical goods, textiles, electronics, among others. This economy is highly integrated or dependent on the U.S. market. There were two, they had two, um, what should I call it? They had, it just slipped my mind, but just to say 60% of the ex exports from the market comes from the U.S. and 40% is imported from the U.S. In terms of income, there is a disparity in that 10% of the affluent enjoys nearly 40% of GDP. Now, as you may know, Central America and the DR, together with the DR, signed an agreement with the U.S. Following that, after 2007, there has been significant investment from the U.S. within uh, the Dominican Republic. In addition, companies who have been moving out of Venezuela have been um, establishing businesses within that market. Okay, Kofi would have gone into some detail with respect to consumption within the market, and this is um, distilled related to grocery sales and non-grocery sales. Grocery, the food bill accounts for over 65% of imports of uh, sales within the market. And when this is further disaggregated, you find the majority of sales are through independent small grocers. And he was talking about the um, Latin markets moving away from the traditional forms of buying. 70% of the market or consumers in, in the market are low income earners. And they purchase from what is called colmados. In Trinidad, we say parlors or mom and pop shops. And uh, they produce, manufacturers produce in smaller sizes to service uh, this area. The hypermarkets, supermarkets account for 46%. This country is experiencing an economic boom at this time. There were two uh, metro lines developed within the last six years, and more lines are currently being added. And new malls and supermarkets are being added within the economy. We saw significant investment and construction going on while we were there. As a matter of fact, there is one um, supermarket, mega supermarket or hypermarket, I would say, who's developing mini supermarkets to compete against the Colmados, who's doing a lot better than the larger supermarkets. Apart from uh, the population, you have 
a significant amount of tourists coming into the market and the government's plan is to double room capacity and this also reflects on consumption in the market. In addition, you have goods going into the Haitian market trucked over into Haiti. So this is an added advantage if you were to export to the market. Haiti, a market of 9.7 million. Because the um, labor cost is relatively low within that market, a lot of companies import in bulk and then they repackage in small amounts to, to service the economy. So that perhaps this is another area that we can explore. The private sector is seeking to establish the Dominican Republic as the premier shopping center within the Caribbean so that some of the major brands are represented there, the Nikes, Ikea, among others, they're all investing in that market. And the main shopping centers, of course, the capital city, Santo Domingo, Punta Cana, which is the tourism uh, capital similar to Ocho Rios in Jamaica. And we also have a province called Santiago, which is the industrial capital. It's like over two hours from the capital city. They have their own manufacturing operations. There are a number of the free zones also function in that area. Consumers demand quality products similar to Trinidad and Tobago at competitive prices. So now we look at an overview of the sources and condiments market within the Dominican Republic. So the product areas, soy sauce, ketchup, mustard, pepper sauce, mayonnaise, Worcester sauce, and other sauces. There are two major producers, we're speaking about competition here, two major producers in the market accounting for 42% of sales under the Victorina brand and Baldom, and we see here the range of products they actually produce, similar product lines. We met with another supplier in the market. This company is the largest producer of canned foods within the Dominican Republic. They produce, they plant their own tomatoes, so we have backward integration, so that they can enjoy economies of scale and, and competitive pricing as a result. Not very common in our market to have um, sauces in tins. Whilst in Trinidad, we have Nestle, Unilever producing some products Within this market, however, within the uh, sauces segment, we find that they're producing the range of sauces that we are exporting, which is not, we don't produce them here under Unilever, Nestle, and so on, but it's actually produced within the market. And then you have Kraft as well, and a wide range of smaller producers. When we look at the trade statistics, we see that exports has been on a steady growth. Imports follow the same trend, except for a small dip um, in 2009, which may be accounted for as it relates to the slowdown in the global economy. But generally, there is an increase in, in imports of sources, which essentially says there is a growing demand for the product. And perhaps you can look at that market. Principal suppliers to the market, the USA, dominant player, over 50%. When that is added to the next uh, four, three, because Colombia, Mexico, Costa Rica, together they account for 92% of um, exports to the DR. Highly concentrated market, but there is still an opportunity for us to enter. So, consumers within the DR consume significant amounts of sources and condiments, and there has been growth within 2011, 7% growth. But more interestingly, 
we see uh, increasingly a growth in the for low fat dressings, and this is an area which Trinidad and Tobago still needs to develop, diversifying the, the Mayo line. The DR, uh, people of DR do not enjoy spicy hot food as Trinidad. They said their palates are like the Puerto Ricans and the Cubans. And you would find a wide variety of Central American and US brands within that uh, market. Santiago, on the other hand, has their own range of brands. As I mentioned, it's a little way off from the capital city. So they have domestic uh, producers within that area servicing that province, smaller producers. So the leading sales in sources um, is in Mayo. They said huge market for mayonnaise followed by tomato ketchup. And this is just representative of shelves, significant shelf space allocated to these uh, single items. Soy sauce, we are told it's important if you're producing this product to sell to this market, it's important to say salsa, China, source of China. This is used to flavor rice. But we're familiar with the Chinese um, soy sauce, and uh, well, the color we produce here is very similar. Produces this dark, rich, brown color. Um, when you use their soy sauce, the rice is literally black, B literally black, as if it's boiled in in black bean black bean sauce. It's a lower quality um, product. Worcester sauce, salsa inglesa, which is an English sauce, is also very popular. This is used as a meat tenderizer as well as to flavor meats and soups. Barbecue sauce, also very popular. This is used mainly for pork meats and other meats. Just to note, when they produce seasonings, we wouldn't usually produce green seasoning. They produce a red variety, so it's ketchup in the seasoning. So it looks something like this. So this is mayo, and this is a seasoning with ketchup in it. We could just pass it around. Okay. There is a growing private label industry within the Dominican Republic. Each of the pictures represent a different supermarket's private label, their house brand. So the first one, first class, is under La Serena. The second one, it's Carrefour. This is a French line, a French supermarket. And the last one is Lida, which is a national brand. Ketchup is also referred to as catch up, so that you'd find ketchup printed on the label and sometimes catch up. Here I just wanted to highlight how the US, all of these products are made in the US, and they have taken our traditional products and they have innovated. The first one is pineapple curry. The second one is a Caribbean jerk. The third is a pepper sauce with garlic. This one is called Louisiana hot sauce. Interesting. So in terms of market segments, as I mentioned earlier, 70% of the market, low income earners, and they shop at what is called the Colmados, and there are approximately 40 to 60,000 Colmados within the country. What is noteworthy is that the two major brands mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, they target the middle to low income, the larger segment of the market. We have a free trade agreement with the Dominican Republic. 
all of our sauces enter the market duty free, except pepper sauce. We also have direct competition coming from Central America under the Central American DR agreement, as well as coming from the US under the CAFTA agreement. Distributor Law 173. Now this has been a major concern for most of our exporters to the market. I remember when we were going to the DR, some company said, but why are you all going there? We cannot sell there. And reference is always made to Law 173. Law 173 essentially says that if you wish you're desirous of parting ties with your representative or distributor in the market, compensation must be provided. Up to five years for sales, and you need to also take into account sales promotion. But under the CARICOM DR agreement, it says in Annex 4, it explicitly says in Annex 4 that companies have an option to exclude Law 173 from the contract. We also met with importers in the market, large importers in the market, who do not include Law 173 in their contractual terms. So it's always important on entering that market to en ensure you have a good contract. To do that, you need to get good legal advice. We were hoping to get a lawyer who we met in the market to present, but he was not available. And they have been working with several companies within the region, extra-regionally, US and other developed countries, and assisting them in entering the market with safeguards against Law 173. So one option is to explicitly state it in the contract that it is excluded from the contract. A second option is this one was not actually tested, but one of the lawyers mentioned it to us. Now, under the CAFTA agreement from 2007, U.S. companies are protected from law and safety tree, so there's an abrogation of the law. U.S. companies can enter and law and safety three does not apply. So a company could establish a company within the U.S. and in turn export to the market. There is another option in that you can set up yourself commercial presence. Set up yourself as the exclusive distributor of your product within the market and then you have sub-distributor sub agreements for several areas. Like all of the other Spanish markets, registration documents must be completed in Spanish before the product is actually registered. Food and beverage products must be registered. It could take up to three months. And just to also say that chemicals take one year. So they tell you when to enter the R, you need to exhibit some patience. And even before your product is registered, your brand needs to be registered within the market. And that could take up to 45 days, a long time. So with respect to packaging, the market is pretty similar to Trinidad and Tobago. What we saw in Panama, on the other hand, was that a number of the sources were in plastic bottles. Whereas in this market, similar to Trinidad, we had a lot of sources in glass bottles. Some were in plastic. For example, you can see the mail and the example I sent around earlier in plastic, as well as in aluminum cans. Single size sachets are also common in the market, and this will target the 
colmados. So we are accustomed to this size, which is a nine ounce. You can have a two ounce for the lower levels of the society. Now, this is tomato paste. You can have, also have a four ounce. This one is ketchup, and this one is tomato paste. So whilst in Trinidad we use uh, the metric ML, in this market it's common to use ounces on the packaging. Sizes. Products are also available in jumbo sizes and within Trinidad this is usually common when um, the manufacturers are serving for example, the restaurants or the hotels, they, they um, provide these sizes directly to these market segments. But you would find these sizes on the shelf, jumbo sizes of, that come, they come in soy sauce, Worcester sauce, mayo, ketchup, among others. Doy packs, we have in Trinidad the ketchup in doy packs, this size um, package. It was rejected in that market, not accepted in that market. Again, labels must be in Spanish. We now turn to prices. So we, to source a 14 ounce size of ketchup, the price could range between 106 to 232. And when that price is compared to a price provided by one of our local manufacturers, and you'd notice here that this price, now the price is above our retail prices. The TNT price below, it's a wholesale price. It includes cost insurance, excludes freight. Just to give you a sense as to what the pricing looks like. Let's look at mayonnaise. 32 ounces between two to three US. Price quoted by Trinidad and Tobago, wholesale price, cost and insurance, excluding freight, even more expensive. So it tells us something. It tells us we need to review our pricing strategy, particularly for the DR market. Look at one more price, soy sauce. We are a bit closer on this one. The Dominican Republic is not a major of export of soy sauce. Soy sauce, Worcester sauce, not major exporters in that area. So those are some of the areas that we can look at. Transport costs, this was provided by one of our shipping lines. There's a weekly service which takes approximately 10 to 12 days and the price is quoted above. So the distribution structure is um, relatively straightforward, common. From the importer, the distributor may also act as a wholesaler. The markup on average is similar, 15 to 25%, and the retailer can charge anything from 25 to 80%. Distribution channels, two major channels. We looked at this earlier. Um, the small grocers, grocers, where you would find the basic flavors, basic sizes, whereas within the supermarkets, hypermarkets, you'd find a wider variety of flavors and sizes. Commercial practices, FOB and CIF. There was none that stood out. Some said FOB, some said CIF, some said either. Contractual terms, generally 30 days. Uh, the EU provides the DR with a 60 to 90 day um, credit term. The US provides a 30 to 45 day. And the US, they also have this 210 policy. If you pay in 10 days, you 
get a 2% discount. Sales promotion. Common bundling, and we have some examples of bundling here. Product tasting, very important. What was unique was that they use Facebook to promote their, their brands and their products. And the common theme throughout the Latin countries, they expect you to support your brand, share in the promotional cost. So that should be included in your contractual terms, whether it's going to be a 20%, 10%, 20%, whatever is agreed between both parties. So market opportunities for sources. Mentioned before, growing demand for sources and condiments. And here we have some of the key areas identified of interest. Six of the importers we met indicated that they were interested in bottles of uh, mayonnaise. Three were interested in the sachets, size of the mayonnaise. Mustard, we had five leads, and this is specifically for your products, the products we took to market. Three were interested in the sachets. For the ketchup, four, we had four leads generated for the bottles of ketchup, and two for the sachet. We also had inquiries for mayo, mayonnaise, in the industrial sizes. One company said to us, perhaps y'all could look at providing pepper sauce in sachets. It's not, we don't have it, it's not um, supplied to the market in the sachet size, single sizes, which could service not just for Colmados, but it could also service the hotel industry. Other sources in sachets, we had three inquiries for Worcester sauce and one for soy sauce. And they've told us that soy sauce market, your pricing needs to be, you need to be competitive. So for the sachet sizes, we can target, perhaps target the Colmados, 40 to 60,000 shops, as well as the hotel and restaurant. Now we look at some of the other products not covered under this presentation. So sauces and condiments was a leading product of interest during our market study. Beverages, we had some inquiries for beverages, not water, very competitive in the water. The water is not portable from the pipe so that they actually purchase the five gallon bottles throughout the country. So this is an area which would be a challenge for us and they look for specific brands of water to purchase. Soft drinks as well, both Coca-Cola and Pepsi are producing in the market and from the video, you would have seen that there is a major local player within the soft drink segment who is growing exponentially in terms of production and sales. Juices, and when I speak of juices, I speak of, of juice drinks because if I may, Refer to a brand here, Fruta. Fruta is not a juice. Fruta is a juice drink, um, which has between 1 to 24% juice content. When you go from 24 to 99, it's called a nectar, as some of you would know. And of course, you're 100% juice. So we refer here to our juice drinks. Keen interest in that market. Tissue products, we export some products at that market, but we saw in the video, highly competitive sector. Um, Kimberly Car Clark distributes in Trinidad, but produces <laughs> in the DR. We have a, a Colombian brand, Familiar, big volumes, highly competitive, but we had inquiries for industrial sizes along with the dispenser type napkins. Tissue products, Household cleaners, another highly competitive area. Apart from the regulated industry, you find there are a number of unregulated um, 
producers in the market, they're producing from home engineers who are at home, they, they're producing, so it drives down price and quality. However, we had inquiries for the, to service um, private labels arrangement. So we provide bulk under their private brand. Pasta, we were advised that the pasta from Trinidad is high quality, comparable with what is produced in Italy. Pricing is an area where we need to uh, improve. Conflicts, the supplier of conflicts within the region is Argentina, and right now they are not exporting, so that there's a spike in the market. So our producer here is getting a lot of inquiries for conflicts. So we had three from that market, and we already sell conflicts to the Walmart, bulk conflicts. Biscuits, we had three inquiries for biscuits, and we brought with us a sample of two types of biscuits where the company is looking for an alternate supplier. They're currently importing the product from China, and the lead time is long, over six months. So the biscuit company is represented here. We would wish to meet with you just to share with you those samples. Bacon powder, small market. BDR also sells bacon powder to Trinidad and Tobago. So we also had two inquiries in that area. So in general, we have access to the Haitian market of 9.7 million. In addition, the tourism market accounting for 4.5 million on average. Perhaps even the smaller sizes of the sources can service the um, Colmados products in industrial sizes. Our products, as Kofi would have identified earlier, our products are quality products and as such targets the middle to high income owners. However, the products are not known in the market. We're talking about sources. Some of the other products are like the tissues, the oil. So we need to develop the brand, develop brand TNT. We definitely need to work on uh, improving our pricing strategy into the market and develop niche products. I mean, when we look at the, the R market, there's, we would say there's no market for soft drinks. But Jalil was able to develop something unique so that the Pepsis and the Coca-Colas are now following that model. They all now producing products of that size. So I close by saying, we can compete in the DR. We have some work to do. And the BDC will support you to assist in your market development drive.